So in this video, I'll show you all 90 locations for every collectible in the Gears 5 campaign. So when you first start Chapter 1, you'll rappel down a rope from a helicopter and land in this little cave water area here. There's a waterfall in front of you, but you want to take a right and head to the right side of the room or area, and there will be a collectible right there on a rock. Then after that, starting in the same little area here, to the left of the waterfall instead, where you're supposed to go for the main objective, except we're going to stray off to the left a little bit, and there will be a collectible here laying on the ground. A bit further ahead, you'll get to this section where the whole ground is opened up in front of you. You can take a left and go through the little offices here. You can see some desks and some chairs and skeletons. If you go to the left here, you can turn around and you'll see a poster on the wall. That poster is your third collectible. Just a little bit after that, you'll have to send Dave through a little tunnel so he can open the door for you. Once you go through that door, you can just go straight into the infirmary area, and then if you look to your right, there will be a dead gear. His cog tags should be laying there between the wall and his body. Now, not skipping anything, just going straight from those cog tags, you're going to turn around, and to your right, there will be a set of stairs. Just run up that set of stairs, and there will be a doorway that leads into a room, and then at the end of that room, there will be another doorway, and you can go in there, and to your right on a desk will be your next collectible. Just a bit after that, you'll have this big room here. There will be enemies here, I've already defeated this first wave, but you just want to head to the very end of this room and take a left into this little side corridor room thing, where you'll see some computers, and on one of those desks will be a collectible. After leaving the computer area, we're still in the same big room. We're going to send Dave through another little tunnel to open up the door here, and the next collectible will be straight ahead on a desk. Now we can move on to Chapter 2 of Act 1, which is called Diplomacy. And right after you start and are able to play, if you just turn around, you can find the next one on a table. These next few are really close together, so if you just turn around from that one and enter the room that you're supposed to go into anyways, just take a left and you will find a blueprint. Then just turn around and go to the end of this same room, and you will find a trauma record next to some Chinese food. After those three, you can move on and you'll get some cutscenes, which will leave you in this little gym area here. If you just turn around and walk past the downed robot and look on the wall, you'll find a note. Upon leaving the gym, straight ahead of you would be the room where you obtain your first core. And by the way, there's actually another core in there in the locker room. If you leave that room and then just continue straight down the long hallway, and then once you get into the room that doesn't look like a big lab area, take a left end on a bench over here will be a marketing brochure. And that will be your last collectible of Chapter 2. Now in Act 1, Chapter 3, right off the bat where you start, if you just run straight, you'll find some cog tags laying on the ground. From there, you're just going to continue on, go through this broken wall, and straight ahead on the desk next to the computer will be a magazine. Right after that, you'll come to this big open room here with the entire wall ripped off. Go to the end and head up the stairs and then take a direct left heading towards the back computer desk in the corner, and you'll find the seditious literature collectible sitting right next to the computer. Later on in the chapter, you'll get to this big long hallway, and in this room that we're entering will be a bunch of survivors. Straight ahead of us in this room here will be a component, and then if we turn around and exit that bathroom where the component was and go to the room on the left side of this big room next to the ammo box, just enter that little bedroom area and immediately on your right on a nightstand will be a welcome package. Later on you'll get to this big beautiful huge open area. There will be quite a few enemies that you have to defeat first and after that if you just head down here down the road to the right Inside of this like bar type building, to the right will be some stairs, head up those stairs, and straight ahead will be the storied Embry Star. A little bit after that you'll enter a big park area, and then upon exiting that park, you'll find a big condor crash site which was carrying a bunch of droids. Inside of that crash site, just after entering it to the left will be some cog tags laying on the ground, pretty much right where one of the drones explode. And then after looting those cog tags, you'll come through a little hole, which will put you into a battle. And then after defeating the enemies, you can take a left and go into the coffee shop where some cores are. I'm going to collect those cores and then exit the coffee shop. And then upon exiting, you'll get to the road, take a left and head down the road, and go into the bookstore on your left. In the center will be like a octagon-shaped shelf, and in the back of it will be your next collectible. 
We're then going to make our way to chapter 4 of Act 1. And after making your way through some fire and defeating a bunch of enemies, you're going to break your way into the Grand Hotel Gate. Make your way through the parking lot, and instead of going where the mission wants us to go, we're going to go to the far left garage door. And you can somehow squeeze yourself between these two pallets, and on the table will be the memo to the Boma Hotel staff next to a toolbox. Now we can head to where the mission wants us to go, which is through the double blue doors, which will bring you to a very dark room, and after Jack lights it up, you can see some cog tags laying next to a dead gear. And then a little bit later, you'll find yourself opening another double door, which will bring you to a nicer lobby room, and straight ahead, under the stairs, will be the Lost Horse Plush. Immediately after that in the same lobby, right after grabbing the plush, turn around and head up the big stairway. And upon reaching the top, you'll see that it's like a birthday party setup. And if you just keep heading straight towards kind of where you're supposed to go for the mission anyways, on the right hand side on a table, I guess it's actually some sort of baby celebration, you will find the Settlement 2 Summer Births Pamphlet. So now we're going to enter the main stage hallway and take an immediate left into the dressing room. And then once you're in the dressing room, you'll see a doorway on your left, which you can enter. And over in the right hand corner will be some song lyrics. And then leaving out of the area with all the lit up mirrors where everyone's supposed to get ready, before getting to the big stage area, you'll come to another little getting ready section. And on the first desk next to the bust or statue will be a worn lighter. Now after meeting up with your boys in the big stage area, which is actually an easter egg for the Hamlet play, actually a good portion of this chapter, not just the stage is part of that easter egg, but if you go all the way to the other side of the stage on the right hand side, you will find the Octus Cannon scroll prop. And that will be your final collectible for Act 1. So now that we're in Act to chapter one, which is called Recruitment Drive. It'll be a much slower paced part and you're gonna take a right and head down the stairs. And then when you get to the bottom, immediately to the right, there will be some sort of fish shop. And in that shop to the left will be the hand carved Riftworm Flute. And then upon leaving that shop, heading down the main path, the same path that you're supposed to go for the main mission, Eventually you'll get to some big metal rusted buildings and in front of one of them on the right will be a fireplace or a furnace. And then on that furnace will be an Elima City license plate. Now this next one is really close, so right after grabbing the license plate, just turn around and to the left near the big horn type thing sticking out of the ground. I think that actually might be a tree. Just beyond that, under the steps and under this white bush, will be the Lost Gear Helmet. After getting to the main objective and making your way through the little security checkpoint, you get to this big steam machine, and then just after the steam machine, after you shut it off, will be the wooden toy gun on the other side of this barrier. And then immediately from there, turn around and head down the street some more and take a left into the salvage and trade shop. Straight ahead will be some components, and then if you look over to your left, you will find a poster called Major Howl and Battle and Ants. After you collect that, exit the shop and head down the main road some more, which will bring you to your main objective, which is another little checkpoint thing. And inside of that building on the left side against the wall will be the new village rules mandate. Once you leave that area, you can head outside and you'll get a little scene, not a cutscene, but like a little thing. And straight ahead of you where that just happened at will be an orange building. You wanna head in there, which is some sort of greenhouse or something, and on the table will be the note to the chief. Now just a little bit down the main path from that, you'll find like a little wooden boardwalk area. Under the Dragon Ball Z capsule house will be a couple of wooden crates. And to the right on one of the wooden crates will be Norsko's letter. Now, way later on in the chapter, kind of nearing the end of it, you'll have to kick open quite a few doors. Right behind this silver one will be a pair of red double doors. After pushing that open, you can move to the end of the room, which will give you the outsider skip schematic. It's right on top of this big black chest. Now, in this big empty room with the big wooden double doors will be our final collectible for chapter one of act two. Along the right side wall will be a box with a component in it. And then right next to the red toolbox, at the very right side corner of the room, will be Oscar Diaz's cog tags. So here we are in Act 2, Chapter 2, and in Chapter 2 we'll actually need to use the map since it's more of an open world level. And if you're in Chapter 2 and don't have the map yet, don't worry, you'll get that soon. It's right here towards the very beginning of the level, pretty much right after obtaining the map. You want to search the abandoned train here, and to our right will be the train tunnel. Pay attention to where that is because that will be where our next collectible is. Just enter the train from the side that's pointing towards the tunnel, and at the end of this cart will be a faded photograph on a skeleton. So like I said, we're actually going to head into that tunnel, which is found here just to the left or to the west of that abandoned train. Once you get there, you won't be able to use the entrance that the train is going through. You'll have to take a left to the left side of that train and head through the cave entrance. Once you're in there, there will be the smallest enemy in the world. And after defeating them, 
you can head straight down to the very end of the cave. On the right hand side, you can enter the train cart, and then upon opening it, you'll see the Grindelith maintenance notes, which is a notebook or a journal over on the ground. This next one can be found beside the frozen lake, almost towards where you first started in this area, and there will be a truck kind of under the snow here. It's a really open area, it's not a named location or anything like that, but in front of it will be a skeleton with the Islander's lost earring. Then you'll want to go up north quite a ways past the abandoned train and the abandoned train tunnel, and you'll find the Outsider Camp. And this is where your main objective should take you for your next chapter. Right outside of that main objective though, you'll find the Outsider Camp, which will contain Lena's journal. This will also lead to some of the later side objectives. You keep heading straight after this campsite, you can find your main objective, which will bring you to your next chapter. And then once you pass that camp and get into the next area, you should get into chapter 3. Once you get into this building here, just head to the end of it at the far back right corner, and you should find the intercepted letter. A little bit later, you'll end up in a little prison cell area, and at the last door on the right of the first hallway you're in, you'll have to have Jack open the door. Once he opens it up, just head on in, and on the right side on a table will be the Sovereign Directive. Now just exit that room, because we're going to go straight to the next one and take a right into the big open room that you're supposed to head into for your main mission. You'll find the AX3312 patient analysis on one of the tables next to one of the beds. And after you pick that up, just head into the room here, which is right around the corner and you're supposed to go here for your main mission. Again, there will be a broken window next to you, you can actually hop through that, and on the left side on a desk next to a computer will be the EV1849 patient analysis. Now our 45th collectible can be found just a little bit after that last one. You'll be heading down some hallways, quite a few hallways actually. And on the right side will be an open room with a body on one of the hospital beds. And right to the left of that is where you can find the RK6194 patient analysis. And then later on, following the main mission still, you'll find this little downward stair area, and then to the left will be a big server type room with a bunch of computers and stuff. And to our right, you can find the collectible Time Worm Data Drive. Now over in chapter 4, we're going to head over to the East Tower substation, which is at the southeastern side of the map. Just open up the big double doors to enter the building, and over in the far left corner room, against the right side wall, will be the security memorandum. Now I'm going to try to go in an order here. Over here, just up the hill from where we just came from, and to the west of where we just came from, You'll see this little open area with a little armored vehicle up on the hill. Beside it on some crates is the letter to Mama. Now we're going to continue on south over the ice bridge. So it's actually on our way from that last one. And we're going to go start the mission at the abandoned mine. All you have to do is go to the location and eventually you'll get to this point here where you come to this wooden tower in a tunnel. Climb on top of that wooden tower and up there on the little blood splatter in the corner will be the frayed pouncer tooth necklace. Now just a little bit after that you and Dell will make your way through a door which he'll have to help you open. If you take an immediate right into the room on your right you'll find the nether cut mining poster on the wall. And by the way we're still in the abandoned mine. Now opening up some more double doors here you'll enter this area here. You can't really miss it you'll know when you get to this area. Over on the far left side of the room in the back corner, passing under all of these lanterns here that are aligned on the building that we're going into, on a wooden table, will be the Nethercut Miner's Journal. After that one you can go ahead and finish the abandoned mine mission, and then head up north to the old Derrick site. There are two of these which we'll have to go to both of them, so don't get mixed up with the one that I'm doing. This one is the one on the right side or more to the east of the other one. But this is sort of a mission, but right before you enter the actual area, on the right hand side over here you'll see a skeleton who has the collectible Orders from Kator Scourge. After you pick that up just head inside and pass all these little barriers here. You will eventually have a fight here but not yet. Like I said this is a little side objective or a side mission or something like that. If you look around you'll notice all of the weapons that are laying in the ground that you're passing. It's pretty obvious that it's going to be a big battle here. Just pass all of that and head over to the orange ladder over at the far end of the area. And you'll have to have Jack open up the yellow hinge or yellow compartment. And then you'll get some enemies and then you can open up the little compartment for the grind lift radiator component. 
After finishing that derrick site, you can leave and then go to the other old derrick site, which is a bit more to the west. And then once you get to the front entrance, again, very similar to the other one, there will be Krav's Locust Tag on a skeleton. Once you collect that, again, you can go into the old derrick site, where again, there will be another collectible in another compartment, very similar to the last one. Except with this one, all of the enemies will be here already, and you'll need to take out quite a few. I already did that though, so I'm just running past and going to the compartment. It's almost directly straight ahead from where you came in. Just head that way and climb up the ledge where you'll find the yellow compartment. You don't need Jack to open this one, you can just open it yourself. And you will get the Grind Lift Actuator component. Eventually, your main mission will be to go to the North Tower, but if you want to go to the North Tower substation, which is right before the North Tower, and to the right of it on the same pathway, just come up here past all of the down logs, and if you look to your left, you'll see a pathway going that way, and then a pathway on your right. The left side pathway will bring you to your main mission. The right side pathway is where we want to go for the North Tower substation. It's a little broken down rusted building with like a satellite type thing on top, some fences outside, but just run all the way up there, and all the way to the front door, and right to the right of the front door on the keypad will be Lena's Scribbles. But that's all of the collectibles for Chapter 4. If you just follow the main mission, you'll eventually get to Chapter 5 here. But right off the bat, when you get to that door there, you want to turn around and do a complete 180, and head down the little ice hallways, and eventually you'll see a right-hand turn. You want to turn into there, where you'll see some skeletons and stuff down in the bottom. And you should see a collectible glowing in the distance. That would be the Nethercut Helmet. Now a little later on you'll come to a room with a bunch of cryofroze soldiers and a bunch of green tube-like tanks. Once you get here, just head down the center of the room, more on the right side, and take the stairway. The stairway will bring you to a little office, whose door you'll have to kick in, and over in the far back right side corner of the room will be the UL1192 subject analysis. A bit later after some cutscenes, you'll get to this big yellow tube. This is right where you start at. If you just look directly to your right, you will find Subject Analysis TE8723. Then you should come to this pathway here with a bunch of frozen soldiers in a room that you have to shield yourself in order to cross without taking any damage. And then on the other side of the room will be the hive soldiers and a generator. That generator is where you should be going for your main objective anyways, so just look right beside it on the ground there and onto the skeleton should be the Lexigram board. Now, much later after some cutscenes and making your way back through a good portion of this lab, you'll come to that lit up door there and inside will be a bunch of frozen soldiers. This is the way you're supposed to go anyway, so just keep going in there. You'll see a fogged up room, and it might do a little bit of damage, it shouldn't do a whole lot, but if it does, just shield up. But over on the desk, on the left side will be EV1849, Subject Analysis. After picking that up, just turn around and your main objective should be to go to that skeleton there that's leaning on the controls. After dealing with that skeleton, you'll see that the room has changed a bit, and then you can just turn around and walk into the room there and pick up the sketchbook, which should end our Act 2 collectibles and we'll be moving on to Act 3. We're now in Act 3 and our 63rd collectible can be found by just turning around and looking at the bar where you should find the Coruscue newspaper. And then the next ones aren't too far away either, so we're just going to kind of go straight to those. Just leave the bar and head down the stairs and head all the way straight down past everything in the airport, all the way to the baggage claim. And then to the right next to a bunch of wooden crates should be the Doomed Empire by Logan Hobbs. Now after picking that up, we're just going to turn around and exit the baggage claim and go to the left with all of the security and metal detectors and head through there and take a right and you should see an open doorway of an office with a bunch of computers inside. Just head to the end next to a window on the desk will be the missive to Agent 9. Upon exiting this room, you'll also find some components on the wall. And then when you do exit that room, you can take a right and head towards your main objective out here and talk to your boy who will give you a gun. Once he's done, just go to your left here and take a right towards the little tents. And on one of the tables just outside of the tent should be Nomad's Creed pinned to the table.
then just get to the point of this airport or airstrip area here with the plane. It's looking like it's about to take off and you're going to get on your skiff in a minute, but instead you're going to go to the right and head towards the hangars, and in the hangar 4 next to a tank is where you'll find the Astounding Lightning Rangers. And that should be your final collectible for chapter 1. Now chapter 2 will put you in the free roam area, so I think you could get the chapter 3 collectibles here, but we're going to go in order and go with the chapter 2 collectibles, so you want to go to the rocket hangar. Eventually, when you get into that rocket hangar, you'll get to this controls room here, and on the right side against the wall will be a skeleton who has the Hammer of Dawn command case. And then once you leave that room, for our 69th collectible, you just want to head down here past this destroyed minigun and take a right to go down these steps here. Our main objective wants us to go straight, but again, instead Instead, we're going to go take a right, take a left and go down those steps also, then take another left. Over in the far corner of the room on a barrel will be the OZP-11 Termination Directive. And then a little bit later you'll get to this section here where it doesn't really have a roof, you're just kind of looking out at the sand, and then once you get into this room you'll have a bunch of enemies that you have to take out. Once you defeat them, just drop down and then go to the end of the room and take a right and go up those steps which should lead you to an office which will contain the UIR space mission brief at the back end on a table just past a dead body. And then once you get to this door here you'll have to open like some double doors just like usual. You'll see a bunch of sandbags and over in the corner past another group of sandbags, it looks like some type of easter egg or something here, you'll find the loyalist orders from Major Tolly. You'll then be kind of walking the rocket or walking under it, kind of following it. Over there just in front of us you'll see a tank. There's an armored guy leaning right up on it and that is actually Major Tolly. That's where we'll collect the UIR tag Major Tolly. A little after that you'll come to this long dark passage which Jack has to light up. Then on the left you can enter this hole in the wall which will bring you to a room and on the left will be the major speech laying on one of the green tables. Now this one is technically chapter 3, I'm really confused by this because this location here is a location that you'll come to towards the end of chapter 2. So I would grab this at the end of chapter 2 before you start chapter 3 free roaming. So once chapter 2 gives you your skiff and has you travel down to the train turntable, head down to where you'll find some double doors and enter that room and you will find Lieutenant Melek's UIR tag. You'll then have to skiff around and do some more stuff for the chapter 2 mission, but now that we're in chapter 3 we're gonna start free roaming for some of these. And you should start not too far away from the rocket hangar, so come here where we just were, and on the right side of the skeleton will be the UIR tag Fallen Loyalist. You probably could have picked this up in chapter 2, but this is right where we ended chapter 2 anyways and I wanted to keep this in order. After that come to the city ruins, which isn't very far from where we just were. There will be a mission here and Jack will have to open up this door. Once he opens it up and the enemies are all defeated, head upstairs and take a right, and on top of the safe here will be the UIR LC Circuit A1. And then just make sure you don't leave this location, because our next one is still in this location. After you collect that chip, just look to your right, and there will be a long concrete pathway which you can run down, which leads to a big empty room and the exit to your skiff, but you're going to turn around and on this one wall that's sticking around, you should see the well-worn Vasgari flag hanging up. Now not too far from there should be the water tower. It's very close to where you left chapter 1. Once you get here, you'll see a tank, which will be the entrance to the building, and there will be a ton of enemies here which you'll have to defeat. Once you do so, head all the way to the end of the area up some stairs, and you'll have to open up a door, which the side objective makes you do anyways. Your AI teammates should be waiting up here for you. Over in the far left corner, on one of the desks, will be the nomad sketchings. Survived. Once you get that one, you're going to come over to this unnamed location here, which is just southeast of both the city ruins and the water tower. You'll find a bunch of overrun armored vehicles, and at the end of one of them, you will find the collectible. Enemies did spawn here once I picked up the components which are in the middle. After that one, you're going to come over to the artillery battery, which is just southeast of that last location and past the bridge. This is another side mission just like usual, and after defeating all of the enemies, you can head into the main building here, and upstairs will be two collectibles, the UIR LC Circuit C1, and then right after you pick that up, just head over right next to it is the Emergency Loyalist Radiogram. 
then you want to come on down to the cargo shipwreck which is another little side objective location and just past the bridge and past the last location that we were in. It's just on the border of the storm. Once you get here, you should have a pretty big fight, but after you defeat those enemies, just come over on the right side in a blue crate. Next to a skeleton will be the RNV Barascu Captain's Log. And then you want to leave that crate in the same location and head to the end down here. Near the little flight of stairs, you will see a dead body and beside it will be the UIR LC Circuit B1. Now coming on down to the Cosmonaut training facility for our main mission. Once you get here you should see the astronaut next to a big tower and when you do you want to take a right and along the cement wall that's barely sticking out will be a collectible called the light mass missile fragment. Now we are still in the Cosmonaut training facility, and once you get to this point where you see this big tube in front of you, finish all of the stuff you have to do here, but instead of grabbing what it wants you to grab, you're going to look to the left and you will find the UIR tag, Captain Tagger. And then you can go ahead and finish the Cosmonaut training facility mission, and you'll have to bring that piece back to Baird, in which you'll have to do a little mission. After finishing that, you'll be waiting on your skiff for a radio call, which will bring you to Nomad's Convoy. Right when you get here and enter, immediately to your right will be the Fallen Nomad's Visor. And we will now be moving on to Act 4, since that is the end of our Act 3 collectibles. Once you get into this building, Fallout 3 looking area here, head through the opened up wall, which by the way, this is a linear mission, so it will bring you here eventually. If you're not seeing this house yet, just keep progressing through the mission. Over at the bottom floor, at the far end, on the right side will be the Encyclopedia of Tyran Military History. This will be your 87th collectible, and we only have three more. After a very big battle, you should be in front of the tomb here, and there will be a rusted out van in front of us, and you should now be on your way towards that tomb that we were just looking at. Instead of following that main objective, we're instead going to take a right, which leads to the edge of the road hanging off, and you'll find the ruptured gear helmet. Now our last two collectibles are right next to each other, and we're at the actual tomb now. We're right in front of the entrance, and we're going to take a right, and next to the blue rusted out abandoned car will be the cog tags for Min Young Kim. Rip to my boy. After picking those up, turn to your right and head to the entrance of the tomb and right beside the entrance is a poster. It's really hard to miss. This poster is called Restoration Notice, Tomb of the Unknowns. And that will be our 90th and final collectible. But that is finally it. If you want to see any more Gears 5 guides, make sure you leave a like and let me know down in the comments. If you made it all the way this far, then thank you. See ya.